Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 22nd of October of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start and first we are going to talk about Kherson direction. The Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of fierce clashes, aviation bombings and FPV drone strikes, artillery duels, storming operations and so on, the Ukrainians lost 60 soldiers, 3 armored vehicles and 1 artillery system D-20. As we can see according to the normal situation uh, there is a very heavy losses from the Ukrainian side on her own direction and mainly the level of losses Ukrainian level of losses connected with the situation in the vicinity of Krynki in this area as we discussed during the previous days the Ukrainians managed to establish a foothold in this area furthermore the Russians uh, since the beginning since the creation of this foothold haven't launched even a single counter-offensive operation the Russians relied on artillery strikes they thought that they will be able to Force the Ukrainians to step back as a result of counter artillery duels, as a result of artillery strikes, FA 500s, and so on. But the Ukrainians uh, didn't retreat, they digged in deeper, and currently they continue their sending more and more reserves in this area, sending more reinforcements, and so on. But this is not the most important update. The most important thing is that, according to some Russian sources, the Ukrainians managed to establish the first pontoon bridge in this area. It's very difficult to understand where exactly the Ukrainians created. Uh, established pontoon bridge but the sources are saying that pontoon bridge was spotted somewhere in the area between the cities like Karsunka and Olgovka. This is the city by the name of Olgovka. We don't have the title on the on the map but I searched on other maps and other maps shows that this city, this village has the title of Olgovka. So the Ukrainians managed to establish pontoon bridge. Obviously this is not like a full scale very big pontoon bridge let's say something like this because it's too big it's around two kilometers and Obviously, uh, such a bridge would be destroyed by the Russian forces. But as I understand, the Ukrainians have created a bridge maybe uh, somewhere, let's say, between Olgovka and this island. There is just 240 meters. Maybe the Ukrainians managed to create a bridge, established bridge between this bank of the river Kazakh and this one. So, But anyway, the Ukrainians try to improve their logistics, try to improve their forces, their positions. And currently, the main purpose, the main operational goal, the, the main, let's say, short Term, term goal is to create a very powerful defense belt along this yellow line to establish fire positions to create trenches if it possible to dig in deeper to get like mortar positions to get mortar systems to get light artillery systems and from this bank of the of the islands to attack of this bank of Dnipro islands to establish fire control over Karsunka over the main supply roads that goes from let's say Dnipriana and Novokakhovka in this area so this is the situation. As I understand, the Ukrainians are going to build more pontoon bridges and we need to expect within the next 48 hours, now that some of the Ukrainian forces, to land their infantry also in the vicinity of Karsunka because they have already established, let's say, fire control and they do have possibilities to support their offensive forces. The Russians, one more time, still haven't managed, still haven't launched even a single counter-offensive operation. Maybe the Russians are planning to create something like an ambush and trap because they understand that the Ukrainians don't have chances to create 100% like reliable foothold in this area because according to the Russian logic understanding highly unlikely the Ukrainians are able to support these forces and so on so we'll see anyway in the next uh, 24 48 hours we're going to receive more updates and more details from this territory uh, the Russians as you can see continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces along Dnipro river trying to reduce the Ukrainian number of Ukrainian forces and not to allow them to concentrate and collect critical mass now we are moving further to Zaporozhye direction. We got also a lot of updates from this territory. During the previous 24 hours, uh, according to the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, the Ukrainians lost 60 soldiers, 11 armored vehicles, and the Ukrainians also lost up to 4 tanks and 2 artillery systems. Uh, as soon as the Russians redeployed some forces in direction of Avdivka, as soon as the Ukrainians uh, felt on their own skin that the Russian defense belt in this area was reduced because of all these redeployments and so on in direction of Avdivka, the Ukrainians started uh, sending more and more armored vehicles to the south. And as we discussed in the morning video, the, just during the previous uh, 24 hours, we got at least three geolocated videos of destroyed Ukrainian tanks. One T-64, one Leopard and one armored vehicle 
vehicle or probably tank inside of Robotina. Uh, furthermore, the Russians from their side tried to attack the Ukrainians with FPV drones and as a result of those strikes the Ukrainians have also losses. But as we can see currently there are no changes on the ground. Uh, now we are moving further to um, South Donetsk direction. And the Ukrainians, the Russians published very interesting video from Malinovka. On this video we can see the usage of the Russian missile Lumur, the missile that the Russians can use uh, from helicopters. And this Lumur missiles has a very long distance, up to 15 kilometers. So basically the Russian helicopters can destroy Ukrainian positions without getting into air defense field of Ukrainian forces. When talking about South Donetsk direction, we got a lot of updates from the line between Uglidar and Novomikhailovka. Uh, when, uh, the Russians start started bombing heavily Ugledar and all these videos, all these scenes from the city reminds me the beginning of artillery preparation. I don't believe that the Russians can establish control over Ugledar because it's still a fortress with lots of like um, fixed and correct positions, a uh, lot of buildings. It's like a small Artyomov, small Bakhmut in, uh, in the South Donetsk direction. So I don't think that the Russians are going to attack in this area. But the Russians also attacked not just Uglidar, but the tree lines on the east of Uglidar. And today we got some videos how the Russians were bombing the, uh, the shelter of Ukrainian forces, a small operational command center of uh, this small group of forces that located in the tree lines on the north of Vladimirovka and Mikolska. On this video we see the usage of Russian artillery forces, artillery systems against the Ukrainian positions. Uh, one more time, as a result of clashes, the Ukrainians lost just 60 soldiers. The level of losses is not so heavy, it's a normal level of losses, but if we increase the number of updates from this area, since, let's say since the beginning of October, we see that the Russians are very concentrated against these four tree lines, one, two, three, four. The Russians are very concentrated against to Glidar and another position in uh, in the vicinity in this coal mine in this uh, area. So we see that the Russians do have some plans, yet they haven't established prepared the foothold for offensive operation. But the first step, if the Russians are planning to launch any offensive operation, obviously the first step is going to be these three lines, as like it's it's a very important area. And if the Russians are able to capture this territory, obviously the Russians will be able to establish fire control over the main roads and to cut Uglidar and this coal mine from the mainland and the Ukrainians will have lots of logistical issues. When talking about Novomikhailovka, the Russians continue bombing and attacking the city, the village. Uh, on this video we see how the Russians were using FPV drones against the Ukrainian positions. Uh, they managed to deal significant damage to the Ukrainians, to their FPV drone, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian command centers, Ukrainian trenches, Ukrainian fortifications. And uh, then there was a church uh, that Ukrainians were using as uh, like uh, FPV maybe drone center or like communication center. And, uh, anti-tank weapon and as a result of FPV drone strike another Ukrainian anti-tank position was destroyed. After uh, drone preparation the Russians started artillery pre preparation these are the fields on the south of Novomikhailovka. We see that everything is under very heavy fire, everything is on fire, there is a lot of explosions, a lot of like uh, uh, rounds the Russians used to, for that purposes. So I expect that maybe within the next 12-24 hours the Ukrainians obviously will publish another video of another Russian offensive operation with probably some losses. But anyway, this is a real artillery preparation. Maybe the Russians are doing this to force the Ukrainians to keep some forces and to like to to get to take some reserves from Avdiivka direction, but maybe the Russians currently already launched an offensive operation. Tomorrow we're gonna see uh, some updates and more details about the situation. Now we are moving to Donetsk area, and today we got also a lot of details, a lot of updates from this territory. The Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of clashes on Donetsk direction, the Ukrainians lost 550 soldiers, seven armored vehicles, including one tank and one artillery system. As you can see, this is the highest level of losses of the Ukrainian forces since the beginning of the Russian greatest offensive operation in Avdeevka area. Today we got a lot of um, details. The Russians managed to improve their positions on the north of Vadyana and Oputna and they got more three lines in direction of uh, Avdeevka itself. Uh, furthermore, the Russians uh, attacked and launched and concentrated forces in direction of Pervomaiska. On this video we can see how the Russians sent at least a uh, convoy, at least three or four uh, personal carriers, just regular trucks, were redeployed 
deploying the Russian infantry and soldiers in Pyramidsk direction, probably for more offensive or storming operations in this area. During the day, the Russians were bombing this territory heavily, Pyramidsk using FPV drones. Uh, during the di n n night period of time, the Russians discovered a lot of Ukrainian positions, and as a result of FPV drone bombing, significant number of Ukrainian forces were wounded or even killed. So this that was something like FPV drone preparation of before the upcoming offensive operation of the Russian infantry. Of course, uh, the Russians also had some losses. The Ukrainians published the video of destroyed Russian armored vehicles along the road between Opetna and Pieski and Vadiana. On this video we see at least three armored vehicles that were destroyed as a result of artillery strike or maybe FPV drone strike. Very difficult to understand. Uh, furthermore, uh, very interesting updates are coming from the global scope of this area. The Russians started using their new type of missile R-37M. This type of missile that the Russians use for MiG-31 aircraft and uh, this is a very powerful missile and the Ukrainians don't know what to do with this type of weapon. The Russians are saying that this missile can uh, attack the Ukrainian aircrafts within a distance of 400 kilometers. So everything that located on 150 to 400 kilometers can be destroyed with this missile. And as soon as the Russians started using this missile with MiG-31, uh, the Ukrainians start losing significant number of air forces. For example, on the 20th of October, but the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of uh, uh, like air defense of strikes of missiles, the Ukrainians lost just for one uh, day seven MiG-29s, significant number of losses. For example, on 21st of October, the Ukrainians lost two MiG-29, one Mi-8 helicopter and one Su-24. So it's already 10, uh, air, 10 um, aircrafts and one helicopter. And for example, today the Russians reported that as a result of uh, like air fightings and so on, the Ukrainians lost three MiG-29 and one Su-25. So, so for the previous three days, the Ukrainians lost up to uh, 15 uh, like um, uh, air units, one helicopter and 14 aircrafts of different types. So the Russians uh, currently established complete superiority in the air, at least when talking about air-to-air -air we see that the Ukrainians uh, stopped attacking the Russians with their Storm Shadow missiles. We haven't seen any reports about attacks against uh, like Crimea with Su-24. And the reason of that is that nothing can fly currently above the territory of Ukraine. If we calculate the distance of 400 kilometers, and let's say if the Russians launch their missiles, Air-37 missile, let's say from somewhere of Raston on Don, uh, so we need to understand that it's like 900 kilometers, Okay, so uh, if we calculate, so everything that located um, on the right side of this arrow could be attacked and destroyed by the new Russian missile. So basically nothing can enter this territory and the Ukrainian Storm Shadow missiles has less range. So the Ukrainians need to get into the area of Russian fire to attack Crimea. And it is very risky and very dangerous. And this is the reason why the Ukrainians start losing significant number of aircraft. Furthermore, the Ukrainians try to shut down the Russian aircrafts that attack of DFK using the same uh, MiG-29, but every single one um, that but the Ukrainians, as we discussed, uh, are losing almost every single day, two, three, or even seven MiG-29 during the day. So the Ukrainians currently this is the breaking period, and the Russians are about to establish complete air superiority. And the main like um, useful tool the Russians have for these purposes is this missile Air 37M. Now we are moving further to the um, uh, Sivir's direction, Sivir's Kliman direction, as you can see, there are a lot of icons and there are a lot of icons from the Ukrainian side. Uh, the Ukrainians published another video how the Russians were trying to attack the Ukrainian positions in the vicinity of Bilogorovka, but that attack was repelled by the Ukrainian forces. They attacked the Russian infantry with uh, cluster rounds, with artillery rounds, and after that the Russians sent the tank for, to support or maybe to evacuate uh, the Russian forces who got in an ambush. But as a result of some attack, like, uh, maybe with the artillery or maybe the tank got on mine, the Russian tank was destroyed. Uh, somewhere in the vicinity of Bilogorovka. When talking about Crimea, there are heavy clashes inside the forest without any movement to the west or to the east. Uh, also, the Ukrainians published a very interesting video how they were attacking and bombing the Russian positions with a T-80 tank. The Ukrainians are saying that it was like a stolen T-80 tank and the Ukrainians were attacking the Russian positions between Terny and Zhitlovka, between Crimea and Zhiribets river. This very interesting video because on this video we can adjust and we can 
can see the real position of Russian forces and the real Russian progress. And we're using this video just to understand uh, where exactly the Russians are moving. So based on this video, the Russian tank was moving um, uh, somewhere from uh, Krimina area, from Svatova direction on this area. And uh, the Ukrainian tank uh, and the Rus that was the Russian position somewhere in this area, and the Ukrainian tank was attacking the Russians from this uh, tree line in direction of this tree line. So we see the Russian progress, and that this uh, at least this part of the front line is correct. The Rus Ukrainians also tried to bomb the Russian positions on the south in direction in the vicinity of. Uh, uh, let's call it Tarskoe salient. Uh, we see some artillery bombardments with cluster rounds, with regular rounds. So probably the Russians uh, managed to concentrate their forces uh, on the edge positions uh, with attempts to make another attacks in direction of Zhribiets River. So we'll see because activity in this area is very heavy. On the northern direction, we also have a lot of updates. Uh, there are clashes. Uh, the clashes for Ivanovka continues. Today, the Ukrainian sources published another video how they discovered the Russian positions, the Russian reconnaissance sabotage group, and after that, they started bombing these forces. And we got another video how the Ukrainian tank from hidden position was attacking also from uh, of Kraken forces was attacking the Russian inf the Russian tanks and the Russian positions in the vicinity of Yahidna. So there are very heavy clashes between Ivanovka and Yahidna. Uh, the Russians are storming this area. The Ukrainians try to counterattack and to hold their positions. So the clashes in this area is very heavy between Orlovka, Ivanovka, Yahidna. So this triangle currently is the main triangle of the most fierce battles on this direction. The Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of clashes on Kupinsk Liman front lines, the Ukraine's loss for two front lines, just 45 soldiers and 10 armored vehicles. So the level of losses is very low, so as I understand, maybe there was some pause or no clashes on the ground. Very interesting updates are coming from Kharkiv. The Russians managed to discover the Russian ukrainian trick. The Ukrainians, for redeployment of the forces, stopped using the uh, railway and trains because railways and trains because it's too difficult. During the previous months, the Russians shown significant results uh, by attacking the railway stations and uh, and so on. So the Ukrainians changed their tactics and start they start using uh, big trucks for redeployments of armored vehicles like tanks and so on. And uh, the Russians discovered the situation and uh, during the previous you know, during this weekend the Russians attacked the post office in Kharkiv and as a result of that attack significant number of Ukraine armored vehicles and manpower were destroyed. Probably tomorrow we're going to receive some numbers from the Ministry of Defense in the upcoming report uh, for, the, for the next uh, 24 hours. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.